Welcome to the CES International News Stage. I'm Stephen Graves from Stuff.TV, and I'm joined by Eric Cheng from DJI. Eric, how's your CES been so far? Uh, it's, it's been pretty hectic, I think, as it usually is, <laughs> but fantastic for us. Uh, you've uh, launched some new product this year. Um, what have you brought along? Uh, so we've brought a couple things with us here. The first is the DJI Inspire One, uh, which is our high-end flagship aerial imaging platform, or drone. Um, that's what you see here on the stage. And what you see up here on the TV is the high-definition live wireless feed coming from the aircraft. Uh, we've also brought a handle mount. And this is a, a camera mount, a handheld camera mount prototype that uses the same camera from the, uh, from the Inspire One. So you can just pop it off and put it on here, and you have a stabilized, uh, stabilized camera in your hands. So not just drones anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not just drones anymore. Yeah, these are super useful for smooth video. Uh, drones have seemed to have exploded in uh, popularity over the last year. Um, what do you think it is that's made them so compelling for consumers? Uh, well, they've been um, really compelling for anyone who has a vision of how they might want to capture a new scene. Um, I'm talking about normal consumers. Um, and also filmmakers, independent filmmakers. So you can really think of it as an extension in the third dimension of reach for a camera or, or really any sensor. Um, so what we're seeing are you know, hobby videos of people taking pictures of their houses or vacations. We're also seeing a lot of use in independent film production and of course also in the high end in Hollywood. But what's really interesting is, is drones are also pushing really hard into industry and commercial use. So in the same way that you can send it up and take a picture, you can send it up and take 100 pictures and then generate a three-dimensional map. And you can also do it in an autonomous way that doesn't even require manual piloting. So they're really, really powerful. Um, what are some of the, uh, the less obvious uses of drones that we haven't previously considered? Because I mean, you see them flying around and you think it's a, it's a jolly fun piece of kit. But what are some of the actual use yeah. scenarios? Uh, we've seen a couple really novel uses. Um, one of them that comes to mind is uh, that drones were used to collect whale breath uh, on the ocean by conservationists. So, you know, a whale spouts and it's got all this mist in the air and they just fly a petri dish through it and collect, collect the breath so they can analyze it. That was a very hard to, that's very hard to do from a boat. Um, we've also talked to other conservationists who want to use them to deploy sensors in the deep, deep forest, for example. You know, places where it's not possible to easily get on, on land. So you might deploy a sensor, and then you might fly another drone automatically to collect data from that sensor later on once it's collected it. Um, so there, there, there are lots of novel uses that people are coming up with, and, and I'm sure they'll come up with a lot more. With increased uh, drone use and popularity among particularly consumers, uh, is inevitably coming questions of regulation. Um, what's your view on the, the current uh, issues facing uh, the drone market, and how uh, do we need to resolve them to expand it? Regulation is a, is a really hot topic, and um, the state of regulation varies greatly by country. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of countries that have very well-established rules and certification processes to do commercial work with drones, and they've, in fact, used risk-based approaches. So, you know, a drone under two kilograms or four pounds might be in one category uh, that is allowed to, say, fly over people. Um, and uh, so we're seeing a lot of variation. Uh, here in the US, uh, we're a little bit behind in regulation, but we do expect it to come. And all of, the, the, all of us are in, in talks with the appropriate authorities to, to figure out how to do it safely. Regulation is a, is a really important factor in the success of this industry. You've added uh, 4K to drones. What other functionality would you like to add? Is there anything you can, you can tell us about? Yes, so this, uh, the Inspire One has a 4K camera, and it's fully articulated so that you can even have a second operator operating just the camera while a pilot flies. Um, another thing that we've added to the Inspire One is a, a sensor package on the bottom that is ultrasonic and optical flow. And what that does is allow us to hold position even without GPS signal. So what, what I think we're going to see are, a, are basically more, more sensors, more eyes on, on drones in all directions to help us um, figure out how to do things like sense and avoid. You know, that's sort of, sort of the holy grail of drone safety. You know, if you can see something, you should avoid it. Um, and uh, well, I think we're going to see a lot of efforts in, this, in that area. 
We've also seen some interesting stuff with, uh, with drones and virtual reality interfaces. Is that something you're exploring at uh, DJI? With virtual reality interfaces, yeah. yes. It's really popular to fly drones wearing goggles. Um, and especially if you're, a, if you're a camera person or you want to capture something very cinematic, um, it, one of the things that might not be obvious is that it, it, it makes your experience it, it very immersive. So you know, rather than looking at a little screen and trying to compose, you feel like you're, you've projected yourself into the camera that's flying around. Um, and so the, we've seen a lot of use. We see more use. And, and we, there are a lot of headsets around here, um, which I think would be a perfect fit for this sort of flying. The other hot topic with drones, of course, is uh, deliveries. Um, do you think that's actually a viable option, or um, is it a market that's going to expand? Yeah, so in de the delivery, we, we see a lot of people very interested in delivery, and I think it's going to require quite a bit of infrastructure to make it work. So if you're talking about what happens in the very long term, I think drone delivery is, is a perfectly viable thing to assume might exist. Um, in, the, in the short term, I think it's going to be much harder to allow drones to un autonomously deliver packages, certainly to your doorstep. You know, you can imagine uh, a stepping stone, perhaps, you know, delivery to a distribution center on an island. Uh, these sorts of things might happen a lot earlier. Yeah. Not least because there's a, a security issue involved there as well. I mean, if someone's flying your new Xbox overhead and <laughs> someone just shoots it down. Right, right. Yeah, security and, uh, is very important, and safety in general. Yeah. Um, how do you see drones fitting into the landscape of the city of the future, if you will? Are they going to be flying around willy-nilly or restricted to roadways, perhaps? Yeah, it's a, that's a really good question. Um, I think, uh, obviously, the incredible utility offered by drones is, is pretty much, will pretty much assure that they will be in our future in some way. Um, but integration into airspace, uh, as the number of flying drones increases, is going to be really important. Um, both, I, mean, I think, you know, from a safety perspective, but also from a lifestyle and comfort perspective. You know, are they going to stay fairly loud like they are now, or are they going to become much quieter? You know, will we get used to them? You know, these are all questions that we haven't seen yet, and I think answering those are going to be just as important as all the other rel regulatory issues that are going on. Because one of the big concerns is, of course, privacy. Right, privacy uh, is a, a concern, and um, you know what we've always pointed out is that uh, invasion of privacy is, is already something that there are laws for, and you know, they of course vary by region. Um, but if you violate somebody's privacy when they expect to have privacy, that's already illegal. So doing it via another method is also illegal. Uh, so I think we have to, um, I mean operators need to be responsible about how they use them. And I think as drones become, as the word drone becomes a general term, a generic term for a tool, and people start to get used to them, I think it should be you know, common sense how to use them. And, and hopefully, that common sense will make its way into how people are using them now. Would you be able to give us a demo? Yeah, absolutely. We'll, get, we'll take it for a flight. We won't fly out over you. We'll just hover up here. Um, so one of the things that I was talking about was um, the ability to hold position without GPS. So what we'll see here, it'll take off. It's going to make some noise, and it might blow things, some things around but it will be very stable even without GPS. All right, ready? All right, so it's, cha it's changing shape, um, which allows me to have full, full range of the camera. And I'm gonna start recording here, so I'm recording video as well. And you'll see that it's, it's um, locked onto the ground and it's totally stable. Now there's a draft in here, and, but it's holding position pretty well. And I can move it back here, let's see. And it, it's pretty hands off, I'm not doing that much to it. And you can see how stable it is. Now if I wanted to maneuver it, you'll see how maneuverable it is. Um, and look at, the, look at the camera and watch how steady it is. It's holding position and pointing in the same direction in a very stable way. <laughs> I see some things blowing around. Now this is our flagship product. It's extremely powerful, which means that you can fly it in thin air, like if you go up to altitude. Um, you can take it up higher and point the camera down. All of the controls to capture uh, beautiful video are under my fingertips, so you see that I haven't lifted my hands. And I can tilt the gimbal up and down. Um, I can even change the mode of the gimbal. You see how the gimbal is staying in place? 
It's extremely stable even if I'm maneuvering in, in, a, in an aggressive way. So what we really did with this product was think about the tools that cinematographers need um, and make it accessible for most people. I mean, it's, it's a higher price point, but we can, of course, um, as in all technology, expect for the, the price point to drop and for the technology we produced for this platform to trickle down into lower price platforms. And how long do you expect that to take? Uh, not long. I mean, if you looked at the pace at which DJI is, is, is uh, releasing product, you know, we're on a very, very fast product cycle, um, and that means you should see it very, very soon. So that's very exciting for all of us. I look forward to it. Eric, thanks very much for your time. Sure, thank you. So should I land it? <laughs> all right, let's take a picture first, guys. So I'll put it up a little bit. All right, everybody wave. All right, I got it. I'll, we'll put that online for you guys to see. All right, so I'll land it here. The landing gear comes down. And I'll just put it down where we took off. Beautiful. There we go. I'm Stephen Graves from Stuff.TV. Join us here at the CES International News Stage for more exciting interviews.